Hi, and welcome to the Excel portion of Chapter 1 for Investments. So in this lecture, I'm going to review how to complete the Excel file that reinforces some of the quantitative elements of Chapter 1. Now, in Chapter 1, they talk about tax rates, tax brackets, and capital gains as far as um, paying taxes on your investments. Now, this is an example tax laws do change and tax laws are different depending on what country you're in so this is coming from the aspects of the textbook and the textbook is using um i believe 2019 tax law for the us so we're going to use this as an example and this is probably very similar to whatever the current laws are or might be similar to uh, many countries but the concepts what's important and the concept here is what is a capital gains and how do you tax capital gains? Well, a capital gain, as we discussed in chapter one, is when you make a profit from buying a stock at a certain price per share, then selling that stock at that price per share later. And if you make a profit, it's a capital gain. And if you have a loss, it's a capital loss. <clears throat> so let's say for the first example, we have these three rules that for capital gains, they're always changing these laws. Uh, currently, they have it at, if you hold the investment over 12 months, so that's called the term. So the tax term is either long or short. So if you hold it over 12 months, you have a long-term capital gain, which means a long-term capital gain is gonna be taxed at 0% if you make less than 38,600 which is great, you pay no tax on your investment. So that's why it's nice if you're in college and you don't have a big income and you've made a couple of stock trades and made some money on, um, you may want to sell them and collect those profits and pay no tax before you start your big job and get pushed into a higher tax bracket. Now, if you are, if your taxable income is um, below, Four thousand four hundred twenty-five thousand, but it's above thirty-eight thousand six hundred. It's going to be a fifteen percent capital gains tax bracket. So I should write here. I should modify this to be above. So if you if your taxes if your taxable income is be, is between thirty eight thousand six hundred and four hundred twenty five thousand, then it's a fifteen percent tax on your half long term capital gains, and if you make over four hundred twenty five thousand eight hundred, your capital gains will be twenty percent of your profits. Okay, so let's look at solving some of these boxes here. The first one is you buy hundred shares of IBM on May. 2019 for $100 per share. Then you sell 100 shares of IBM stock at July 20th for $115 share, a, dollar a share. Okay. So what we have to do is first we're going to take the difference. So we made a gain. So I'm going to take, and I'm going to put this in brackets, the 115 minus the 100, and then I'm going to multiply it by 100 because it's 100 shares. So this is my profit is going to be 1500. My tax term term is this short or long term. So this is going to be over 12 months. So I'm going to put this as a long term tax. <clears throat> so the total tax is paid. Since my my total income taxable income is 35,000. My current bracket is 12%. Um, I go to the rule here, it's a long-term gain, so over 12 months, and the tax, my taxable income is below 38,000, I'm gonna pay zero tax on this, so my tax is zero. So, I'm just gonna change this to currency. And 
and I'm gonna because this I don't like the counting not crazy about the accounting uh, format most finance people work in the currency format so I'm just going to highlight this format hit the paste button and paste this down to all the questions make it look a little bit nicer okay okay so let's let's do example two here now April 2020 to July 2020 this is greater than 12 months so I'm just going to right away say this is a long term tax term and my profit again I'm going to take my sell price minus my purchase price the times 100 shares because it's 100 shares for this example so this is my total profit long-term taxes uh, but now here it says if um, over 12 months and my income is between 38 and 100, 425, which 125,000 is between the two, then I'm going to pay a 15% tax rate on this money. Now, <clears throat> If this, why is this mar this marginal tax rate right here? That is saying if this was short term, then I'd have to pay twenty four percent. But since it's long term, I'm only paying fifteen percent. So it's incentivizing me to hold my positions long term. And this is why these capital gains are here. They like they want to position, encourage people to make investments on the long term, and also they want to. Um, make it a little bit more fair for people with lower income as far as the total taxable gain. Okay, <clears throat> so here we have an example. Let's do the profit again. Oops, I gotta put my brackets in. My sale price minus my purchase price times 100 shares. So there's my profit on this position, but this is short term. May 20, February 2021 to May 2021 is only, it's less than 12. 12 months so the term would be short so my taxes i'm going to pay um since this is short term it doesn't matter what my taxable income is at this point um because it's not a it's not a long-term capital gain so i'm going to pay whatever my current marginal tax rate is i'm going to pay that i'm on this position and that's why we have that marginal tax rate so this is my current top tax rate so this is my taxes on that Okay, so those are three examples, uh, two longs and a short. The last two you can do on your own for this, this field. Now let's look at the tax rates. Okay, so <clears throat> like many tax, taxing systems around the world, the US tax system is progressive, which means the more you make, the higher tax bracket goes. So when they say, what's your tax bracket? or your marginal tax rate, it's wherever the last dollar of your income is. So if you're single and making 100,000, uh, we have on the returns, let's put that so single individual, we have singles can file taxes and married people can file joint returns. So this is a single filing taxes, 100,000 would mean that their marginal tax rate is 24%. But that's not gonna be their average or blended tax rate because of these tax buckets. So what we have to do is we have to figure out how do we fit $100,000 in, break it out into these tax brackets and then figure out what the total tax rate is gonna be. So for the first bucket, it's gonna be 9,000 is how much money would fit in that first bucket, which is basically just saying 9,000 minus beginning point minus ending point. And then the tax rate on this would be the income times the rate. The next level would start at 38,700 and end at 9,525. So this is the amount of money that, that is between these two numbers 
and that this bracket starts at 9,000, <clears throat> ends at 38,000. So in between these two numbers, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> we can fit this much money in that tax bracket. So that would be this times this. So if I put a, um, if I put a total down here, and this is going to be the sum of this column. So far, I've only uh, accounted for taxes of 38,000 out of the 100,000. So I'm going to keep going. So let's, the next bracket again, ends at 82 and starts at 37. So this is how much money can fit in there. And then again, the tax is going to be that money times that current rate. So <clears throat> I have 82,000 <clears throat> left here. The, the next tax bracket starts at 82, but we're gonna end at 100. So I'm gonna say, and that's lower than the returns here. So I'm gonna say 100,000, which is my money I'm making here, minus the start of this tax bracket means that <clears throat> I can only fit 17,000, even though this tax bracket, you could fit over 70,000 within the 24% tax bracket. I only have 17 to put in there because that tops out my income. <clears throat> so I pay this amount of tax, I pay 24% on that. So if I was to do my total taxes, I would say, I would sum this column, here are my total taxes. So my average or, or, or blended rate would be my taxes divided by my total income. And make this a percentage. So even though my marginal tax rate is 22%, I'm sorry, 24% is my marginal tax rate, my blended or average rate is 18% because it's blending the 10, 12, 22, and 24 portions together. So this is what, for every dollar I earned, I paid 18.3 cents tax. <clears throat> However, I paid different levels of tax depending on how it fits into the tax brackets. Let's do another example. Let's do if I made, what if I'm single and I'm making 200,000? So what I could do here as a shortcut is I could just take these first three, copy these, put these down here. Um, it's not gonna work because of the formulas. Okay. So let's just do, I'll do the formula. Um, so for each tax bucket, I'm going to start with the beginning, the ending top dollar and minus the beginning dollar. So you see for these three brackets. Now the fourth bracket here, the 24% is 82 to 157. So again, let me sum this column and I have, um, I could, I could fit in, I could still fit in this full bracket here, but I have, uh, in this last bracket goes to 157 to 200,000. So it's actually, there's going to be no remainder here. So I made, I did my full 200,000, do my taxes. So you can see that everybody who makes the first 9,000, everybody makes, no matter what your, your marginal tax bracket is, pays $952. And everybody who makes more than $38,000 is gonna pay 3,500 on the second tax bracket. So as you make more money, in this example, I'm making $75,000 more, I fill up tax bracket the 20% the, um, tax bracket, which I only partially filled here, but I completely fill that here. And then I can also fill the 32% tax bracket to get to my total income here. <clears throat> so my total tax is paid. I'm just going to sum this column. Here's my total tax is paid. Um, now I should probably do that down here. Sum it doesn't matter where I put it, and then the blended rate is going to be my taxes divided by my total income. So my blended rate here is 22%, even though my top marginal tax rate is 32%. Okay.
So uh, the end of the story is the more money you make, the more you pay in taxes. Now, the last example is a joint return. So you would use the tax brackets here from the joint return to calculate the money um, taxes paid and, and blended rate using that function. Okay, so this is the uh, end of the video for reviewing the spreadsheet work for chapter one. I look forward to talking to you during the spreadsheet work for chapter two. Thank you and take care.